Well, we were out of town last uh, week end. We took off and we went to the coast and we looked at fishes and we looked at seagulls and then we went up and saw a beautiful lake and then we went up and saw our beautiful children and uh, grandchildren and it was a wonderful time, wonderful time. Really appreciated uh, the opportunity to get away for a couple of days and you know what, every once in a while you need to just take a break and go and that's what we did. So thank you for that freedom to do that. Take your Bibles open to the book of Hebrews, if you will. Book of Hebrews. <clears throat> this thing on loud enough that you guys can hear me? Okay. All right. It has to be loud enough so I don't fall asleep. All right? Okay. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 2. Beginning at verse 1. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the world, for if the word spoken by the angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders and with divers miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost, according to his own will. Let's pray. Father, I pray that you would speak to our hearts this morning. God, I need you so much. And Lord, uh, I pray that each of us at this very moment are allowing you entrance and guidance into our hearts. Father, I pray that you'd guide my tongue. I pray that, uh, Lord, you'd cause me just to say the things that need to be said in the way they need to be said. God, I pray that I would not be in the flesh, but in the spirit. I pray and ask these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. I'm going to talk to you this morning and ask you a question. Are you drifting? Are you drifting? I've never been to Niagara Falls, but I'm told that far up the river you get uh, you begin to see signs and warnings. How many, has anybody ever been to Niagara Falls? And have you been on there and you've seen the warnings where it says, warning, warning? What are, they, what are they warning you of? They're warning you of that there's a fall coming up of 167 feet. 167 feet, and they're trying to warn people because people have gone to their death. I think uh, I think of a lot of times people may get out and if they're on unfamiliar bodies of water, may have set their boat. And of course, I'm not a real fisherman. I I fish off the bank. I like fishing off the bank because it's solid ground. But uh, at any rate, um, you get in a boat. And I think that what they do is you, go, you get to a place and you do you drop anchor or do you just kind of drift? Sometimes you troll, that sort of thing. But if you did not drop an anchor, you would, you would drift. You would go with the current. And if you were in an unfamiliar, unfamiliar area, it could be that by the time you hear the falls, it's too late. It's too late. And I'm concerned that in our churches today, but I'm not in all churches. I'm in McKee Road Baptist Church. I preach this this morning knowing that it's easy to drift. It's easy to get in God's house and go through the motions. It's easy to get in God's house and come and sing, or maybe halfway sing. You know, I don't know why God hasn't given me a, the voice that I would love to have. Because I love to sing. I love to sing. But when we have opportunity to sing, let's sing. Don't sit there and drift. Don't sit there and drift. The writer of the book of Hebrews is posting warnings throughout this, this book. I have not determined if I'm going to teach him all these things. But in here, the first four verses of chapter 2, he talks about negligent, being negligent. 
Uh, chapter 3 talks about disobedience. Chapter 5 talks about desertion. Chapter 6, he talks about rebellion. Chapter uh, 12, he talks about worldliness. And then again, an unwillingness to listen to God. There's a lot of warnings in this book of Hebrews. But there's a warning here. And the Greek verb used here means to drift or to flow alongside by. Uh, the metaphor in mind seems to be that of allowing current to carry someone along from their fixed location. We talk about it in Sunday school. This is my fixed location. This is my fixed location. It tells me how to live. It tells me how to go through every day. But Christian, if we're not in it, we're just drifting. We're just drifting. Look at verse 1. We talk a little bit about the reality of drifting. He says what? Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. The expression indicates that the possibility of drifting is ever-present. If I have not set my anchor in God's word, if I have not locked down to this, then I will drift. It was a great class this morning, I thought. Not that I was teaching, I think we just shared so many good things. And one of the young men had a wonderful testimony. And it was a good testimony. And it was a testimony that showed that he was not drifting. That's a, that's a good thing. He was allowing the word of God to fashion him and to control him. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed or pay attention to these things. We should make them important. There's a possibility of drifting. Can you think of any illustrations in God's word? Lot, perhaps, pitched his tent towards Sodom. What? Lot was drifting. Lot was drifting. How about Samson? He drifted in his relationships with Delilah. And he allowed himself gradually to drift into thought patterns of the pagans. David was a man after God's own heart. And yet he drifted when he, in a moment of leisure, allowed his eyes to fall on the Bathsheba. And then his heart drifted toward lust. Peter never intended to deny the Lord. I'll not deny you. And yet he denied Christ. And it came as a result of drifting. Drifting. Drifting is a possibility in every Christian's life. Stop and think this morning. Let's make it personal. When I come to the end of the message, it's all about, so what did all of this mean to me? What did all of this mean to me? You know, if we believe that God is on the throne, we believe that God is all-powerful and he's omnipotent and he's, he's, he has all knowledge and he knows everything that he's doing, then he can take me, who maybe just maybe a half a step more than a mule, and can use something that I say, not that it's my words, but that he's going to talk to you about in your heart. So what does this message mean to me today? What does it mean to me today? I guess what we need to be able to identify is, am I drifting or am I on the edge of drifting? You know, we have all kinds of good reasons why we do all the things we do. I was talking to Dottie this morning and she mentioned something. I said, it's so easy when, that for me to look and go, look at the faults on this person here, you know? Oh, my goodness, they've got a problem in their life here, and they've got a problem in their life here, and this. And yet it's difficult for me to see into myself. Why is that? It's because I'm not allowing the mirror of God's word to show me where I'm at, to show me if I'm dropped anchor in his word or if I'm drifting, if I'm drifting. You know, if you ever get to that place, you need to remember, remember 1 Corinthians 10, 12. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. Lest he fall. You see, drifting, folks, requires no effort. 
we're a busy people. We work hard. We go out, we have our jobs, we have our daily chores, we have sicknesses we're dealing with. Life is hard, and so much of the time we want to come and go, that's understandable. We did that last weekend. But you know, when it comes to God's word, we need to be in it. And we need to make sure that we're anchored to it and that we're not drifting. You know, how do you drift? You're in a canoe, just stop, just stop rowing. Just stop rowing. We watched them as they were out there in their little kayak. No, kayaks. And they're just going like this. Of course, I was, you'd see the ones that are just rented. And we, we sat and we watched. We were having lunch. And we sat and we watched as this one guy who was absolutely thrilled, the husband, and he was in his own little kayak. And then the wife was behind him. And you could almost read her mind. It was like, I didn't want to get in this. I'm having to paddle, and he's out there just going for everything he's worth, and he was probably 60, 70 yards in front of her. Finally, he stopped and looked back and came to himself <laughs> and realized. But drifting requires no effort. Just stop rowing. Just stop rowing. The same is true for a Christian. That's why we said here we must give the, we ought to give the more earnest heed. We need to be aware that we can drift and will be absolutely no good to God. Absolutely no good. It's an unconscious process. I mean, it's a no-brainer. I mean, we just don't think. Uh, I'm not thinking. I'm not thinking. What? what were, were you not thinking? No, I wasn't thinking. You know? I would imagine Brother Jeremy a lot of times might come up to people and he's thinking, what were you thinking? Well, I wasn't thinking. This is why I did that. This morning I almost ran a red light because I saw cars turning the other way. I've been to that stoplight literally thousands of times. I know the rule. I started to go through. Why? I wasn't thinking. I wasn't thinking. I was drifting. I was drifting. It's an unconscious process to drift, to drift. The thing about it is we're unaware of what's going on underneath us. When you're drifting, you need to understand that Satan is not. This world is not. It has a purpose. It is everything against God. As a child of God, we need to learn not to drift. Many individual Christians have drifted slowly away. How did I get over here? How did Sometimes it may be like the prodigal son. I... When he came to himself, it was like, wait a minute, I used to be over there, now I'm over here. How did I get over here? Well, you've drifted. Why? Because somewhere along the line, you pulled up the anchor, and you did not allow yourself to be anchored to God's word. Christian, this is, this is, this is, all, this is who we are, faith and practice. That's what we're supposed to be about. And yet, we allow ourselves to drift. Allow ourselves to drift. And if we continue to drift, one day you'll find yourself, I'm not in God's house. Or somehow God's house and the attendance of it is not as important as it used to be. As it used to be. We used to call it the Lord's Day. I don't hear that term so much anymore. Have we drifted? I think maybe we have. We have drifted. And you can continue to drift. You'll be out of God's house. You know, being out of God's house is a good indication that you've drifted away from his word. Isn't it interesting? You never drift upstream. Why? You, you never drift up against the current. Why? That's something you have to do on purpose. Second Peter, I'm, I don't know if Don's gotten into Second Peter yet or not, but in Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 5, and we talked about this the other night in our men's meeting, you must constantly be adding to your faith. We are to be Christian, constantly adding to our faith. Are you adding to your faith this morning, or are you drifting? Are you drifting? Second Peter 3.18 talks about, but we are to grow 
in grace. We are to grow in the grace. You know, the moment we stop growing, you're going backwards. You're going backwards. Was there ever a time when you were closer to God than you are now? You drifted. You drifted. And when we drift, we're no good to God. You know, it starts off slowly when you drift. It may be that, well, I, maybe it's a situation where money's tight, and you know, I'll just skip this, this week's tithe because I really can use it. Well, we can reason all these things out in our mind. You know, never mind that it says it belongs to the Lord, the tithe. But we drift, and so we start drifting. Before you know it, you'll be picking up speed, and you'll be drifting pretty far away from God's word. And you'll get to the place where you'll go, oh, we've got a real problem here in our home. What's happening? You've drifted away, and you have now lost what uh, the principles and precepts of God are no longer uh, that important in your life. Your family has gone in such a way that it's not important to them, and then something happens. Somebody does something. You've got a tragedy in your home. You can hear the waterfall. It's too late. It's too late. You've drifted. You've drifted. You know, I've seen videos, and I think these were under power because they were big, I don't know if you call them boats or ships. I know we got some Navy people here. At any rate, they sit in the water. It's a vessel. But have you ever seen them where they come in, they're coming into dock and they crash? Have you ever seen that? And they'll crash? A boat that's drifting is dangerous. It can cause a lot of damage. Cause a lot of damage. Parents who are drifting will soon lose that golden opportunity to teach their children. As this tells us in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 4. I believe that the Apostle Peter in the book of Galatians chapter 2 was drifting a little bit. Remember when he ate with the Gentiles? And it was okay to eat with the Gentiles. But then when he saw those other Jews there, oh, and he pulled away from that. And it said that many people, because they were following Peter's lead, he caused them to drift away too. That's when Paul withstood him to the face. Many are tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. And you know, a boat adrift will crash. A boat adrift will crash. And it's the same thing in a Christian life. If you're drifting this morning and you're not anchored in God's word, you're bound for shipwreck. You're bound for shipwreck. The reason for drifting. The writer of Hebrews makes it plain that the cause of drifting is neglect. We've neglected to be in God's word. You've neglected to be in God's word. Why do people have trouble making a, a right decision how to serve God or what's right or wrong in their life or what they should be a part of? It's because you're not in God's word. You know, neglect can come through inattention. Inattention. The readers here of the book of Hebrews were not giving attention to their salvation experience in Jesus Christ. Somewhere along the line, line they'd lost the excitement of what God had done in their life. Have you lost the excitement of what God has done in your life? Is it no longer fresh and exciting to know that I was on my road to hell, but Jesus saved me? And that is exciting to me. That is exciting to me. Think about it like this. Think of, um, I don't know, you come up with the measurement in your own mind, but uh, measure where you're at this morning. Are you being neglectful to God and his word and his church? Let me put it this way. If you took that same emphasis of where you're at with God and you applied it to your marriage, would it be a good marriage? If you neglected your marriage like 
you've neglected God's word and his church, would it be healthy? Would it be healthy? Drifting comes through a lack of discipline. Paul wrote to Timothy, he says, Neglect not the gift that is in thee, 1 Timothy 4.14. See, the church this morning is failing to be the sight and the light, the salt and the light. We're failing to be the salt and the light. Becoming a better Christian involves spiritual discipline. Are you just taking a breather? How long have you been taking a breather? We're drifting, folks. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 4, 7, but refuse profane and old wise fables and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. We have the instruction here. But somewhere along the lines we decide that's not important to me. I don't have to do that. You're drifting. You're drifting. Unless a child of God can resist the devil... Unless a child of God studies God's word, unless the child of God engages in daily prayer and applies faith to life, which was our discussion this morning in our Sunday school class, guess what? Drifting is inevitable. You cannot in and of yourself be a good Christian if you're not in his word. You drift. Do you have a dis, 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 diminishing desire to read God's word? Answer this question for yourself. How many times did I pick up God's word and look at it this week? How many times did I try to commit something, a scripture to memory? How many times did I just simply consider God this week? You're drifting. When somebody loses their desire to study God's word, mark it down. You are drifting. You are drifting. You know, prayer is a wonderful blessing. It's an avenue to communicate with God. How's your prayer life? Are you praying less and less? Do you not need to pray? You know, we should have some sort of a, a prayer closet. We should have some sort of a prayer altar. I don't mean this in a bad way. I think... What I'm trying to say is we need to, on purpose, have something that draws us to mind. I need to meet with God. I need to pray to God. Do you have a dis diminishing desire to be with God's people? There's nobody I'd rather be with than you folks here. You're not the only people I know. Same you with me. But I love to be around God's people. But if you find yourself going, I don't know that I, eh, I don't need to go down there. You know, I don't need to be around those folks. We're going to have this uh, uh, Roundup of Friends Sunday about three weeks from today. I wonder how many have not even come. We're drifting. We're drifting. The Bible, Hebrews 10.25 is still in there. Not forsaking of the assembling of yourselves together. As a matter of some is. Are you drifting this morning? Are you drifting this morning? Do you even have a desire to share the gospel? If you don't, you're drifting, or you've drifted so far away. It should be on your heart and mind at all times. I'm looking for this opportunity to be a witness and testimony, to be a witness and testimony. You know, when one obeys the gospel, he knows that God has blotted out his sins and made him a new creature in Christ. And because of that, you should naturally want to tell somebody else. But do we? When a Christian no longer desires to take the message of the gospel to other people, mark it down. You're drifting. You're drifting. Or maybe the things of the world become more important to you. Maybe, hey, and I like ice hockey, I like football games, I like baseball games, I like playing, all, and you've got all things that you like to do. But when those become more important to us than the things of God, you're drifting. The Apostle John in 1 John, 2nd chapter, warned us about 
loving the world and loving the things in the world. Christian, if those have become more important to you this morning, you're drifting. You're drifting. You are drifting. Paul describes some who were lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God in 2 Timothy chapter 3. Have you reached that point? Well, the writer of the letter of Hebrews explained the possibility and cause of drifting. Every transgression, disobedience received a just recompense of reward, he said in 2.2. You know that drifting in the Old Testament ultimately led to God's discipline. Child of God, when you step out of line with your heavenly Father, when you are drifting, there will be a recompense. There will be a payment for that. Oh, you say, well, I've never... He's never bothered me about it yet. Are you saved? Are you saved? Because whom the Lord loveth, he chastens. Drifting always leads to a punishment for God's people. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, he said in 2.3. The pronoun we is referring to believers, children of God. And he uses it twice here to emphasize what he is saying. And he reads there in 2.2, two, it says, For if the word spoken by angels is steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? The transgression refers to sins of commission. And while disobedience referring to sins of omission. The difference is doing something we should not be doing or not doing something we should be doing. That's omission commission. I'm reminded of a story of a preacher who was preaching a, ser a series of messages on sins of the saints, sins of the saints. And he was reprimanded by a member of the church. After all, said the member, sin in the life of a Christian is different from sin in the lives of other people. Yes, replied the pastor, it's worse. It's worse. We have an idea that our believers were under grace. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. But it does not give me the freedom to go out and sin. Are you drifting this morning? I can dabble in this. I can do this. I can do this. I know I'm saved. Yeah, but you're not only hurting yourself, you're hurting those around you. The Bible tells us, for unto whom, whomsoever much is given, of him shall be required. Luke 12, 48. Remedy for drifting. He wrote this. Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. Can anybody guess what memory verse is going through my mind? <laughs> Romans 15, 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime. We're written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scripture might have hope. It's written for us. This is recorded for us. And to give the more earnest heed to these things. We would do well to give the more earnest heed. We're drifting, folks. I'm concerned, McKee Road Baptist, that we're drifting. I really am. I'm concerned that we're drifting. I think we have some great people here. I think we have people that love the Lord, are saved, but I think that somewhere the anchor has been pulled up and we're drifting. What do you evidence that by? Where are the members? Where are our members? Where are our visitors? Where are those people that you've been witnessing to that you should be bringing in and sitting down beside you in the pew? How long have you been a member here? How many people have come to this church because of you? How many people have you led to the Lord? We're drifting. We're drifting. I'm not interested in playing preacher. God's not interested in us playing 
He doesn't want us to be drifting. He wants us to anchor into his word and get on with the business of being a witness and testimony. We need to keep rowing. Second Peter 1.10, Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure, for if you do these things, you shall never fall. We need to keep rowing. Think of it like this. You're in this rowboat. You're in this kayak, whatever. You're paddling. Don't take the oar out of the water. Keep going. Book of Hebrews chapter 11. Those that saw, the, who were talking about the Jacobs and the Israel and the, on, in, in God's word that never saw the end of their faith, and yet they continued to walk by faith. What were they doing? They continued to row. They refused to drift. Joseph could have drifted very easily. All the things that happened to him, and yet he didn't say, huh, I've done everything right. Might as well do something wrong. He never said that. He didn't drift. He didn't drift. You know, Tom Pride told me, the Christian never retires. Where along the line have we determined that in this Christian walk, in our, in our boat, that we can actually just pull up the anchor and drift? I've done enough. I've got enough on my plate. I'm trying to make everything else go. You're drifting. What gave you that right? I don't have that right. I do not have that right. I do not have that right. There's no place for retirement in the Christian circle. That doesn't mean that you cannot retire, folks. That's not what it's saying at all. But it's saying that when it comes to being a child of God, we cannot drift. We cannot neglect God's word. We cannot neglect praying. We cannot neglect not coming to his house. We cannot make things in this world more important to us than the things of God. We cannot drift. If McKee Road Baptist Church is to go on and be a lighthouse for God, we need to determine that we are anchoring ourselves to God's word and we are not going to drift. Problem is, many of us have never come to that place where we've made that decision. And we made the decision to receive Christ as our Savior, but hands off me, God. I got it from here. You're drifting. You're drifting. We need to expect that there's going to be things that come up against us. You're going to have to go against the tide. You're going to have to fight to go to a certain location. You're going to have to keep rowing. It's not, and I mentioned this morning, it's not the matter of having more faith. It's simply the matter of exercising the faith that God has given you. And you exercise that faith and go, I can't see what is going to come good out of this, but I know that's the way I'm supposed to go. I'm going to continue to go that way. And if you need to row upstream, row upstream. Drifting. Are you drifting this morning? Are you drifting? Child of God, are you drifting? Is, does God's word mean what it used to mean to you? If I could have every head bowed and every eye closed.